A lot of time when companies do exactly what they said they will do with the fund that they've raised, mm -hmm. it helps them to come back for more money when they keep to their words. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Test, Optimize, and Scale. Have some of the authorities in the financial world of investment crowdfunding joining me for a discussion today. It's Danielle and Zoo Rays from Set Apart AC. They work on the Form Cs for Reg CF, the, the Form 1As, Regulation A+. We're going to talk about audited financials, certified reviews, everything it takes to go into the launch of one of these regulated investment crowdfund campaigns. Danielle, Zureis, thanks for taking the time to join today. Thank you, Jason. Thank you for having us. We are excited to be here and looking forward to it. Likewise. Excellent. Excellent. I've been looking forward to it myself. I know you guys are part of some of the, the top start engine campaigns and other portals within the space. You've worked with founders of all different sizes, those that are, are leading and on multiple rounds, uh, there are multiple rounds into their process, others that are, are learning for the first time and looking to get off the ground smoothly. So Danielle, thought we could start a bit with your background and Zure's as well. When, when did you guys begin? How did you get into this world of accounting for regulated investment crowdfunding? Sure, sure. So, um, I personally, uh, I am a certified public accountant and I have been that for over five years now, going to six years, actually seven years now. <laughs> so, but prior to that, <laughs> time flies. Prior to that, um, I have, uh, I work with a uh, um, public accounting firm like Deloitte and KPMG and uh, even mid-sized accounting firms. So I've been in the industry for about 15 years now. Um, so when I, I became certified almost seven years ago, I decided that I wanted to start my own business. So, um, and to build my own business, I needed to work part-time. So I posted my resume on several headhunter website looking for part-time contractor work and then start engine found me and they asked me if i knew how to put financials together and i said yes i did so i went in the office for interview and right there they they they, they hire me and got me started so that's how the story of set about accountancy golf started so i started putting financial statement together for a red client who could raise up to 100,000 um, in their campaign. So, and they would tell Start Engine, she's doing well, she's so quick, she's really good. And Start Engine kept hearing it and kept hearing it. And some of those issuers who even sent me thank you notes and, and thank you cards with money in the mail. So when Start Engine, um, so how a professional and the great feedback they were having. So they asked me if I knew how to do reviews and audit, which I say yes to it. And then I got my business partner, Marco, who is not here today on board. Um, and I will prepare the financials and he will sign up. You know, I would do the work, he will review and he just kept going and growing up to the point where we had to get a team on board for review, a team on board for audit and other crowdfunding platform found us, you know, and they said they found us through the SEC website by looking at our work. And that's how we are here today, having performed over 1,200 reviews and audit. So that's the background wow. of set up our accountancy corp in the past almost six years, over six years, almost seven years, I mean. Yeah, I know it feels like uh, not that long ago, 2016, when Reg CF went into effect, we had yes. campaigns running back in May. I, I can't believe it's been that long. I go back and forth on the years myself. 
Yes, we were actually one of the pioneer um, CPA vendors in the industry because I remember when we started, um, there were only other two main CPA firm doing crowdfunding CPA. I think it's Artesian CPA in Colorado, mm -hmm. <laughs> and another one was in Texas. So they, so we were like some of the pioneer CPA vendor. You know, I can't believe it's been almost seven years now. Um, so uh, yeah, totally. And I can't believe you worked on over twelve hundred. I know there's been uh, about eight thousand reg CFs to date. Now, now that includes. Uh, multiple filings for the same issuers, but to think uh, of the market share, the percentage uh, of these filings that you've worked on directly yeah. right here definitely fits. Totally. And I can say we've repeated, we are actually uh, a little over 2000. So we actually own quite a significant share, you know, of the crowdfunding space as CPAs. And it really has to do with the excellency of our work, our professionalism. Um, we pass the peer review, we've been peer review, and we are usually very quick and responsive. So one thing about CPA, and if, especially during tax season, are very busy. And I remember when we started, they used to be like, wow, my CPA take three weeks to get back to me. How is she, <laughs> you know, like, but within 24 hours, hours, getting back to issuers, you know, so that was really helpful. The fact that we are very responsive and this is like um, what we focus on 90% of what we do. So we've been able to create a system in place to accommodate uh, the demand while staying uh, competitive and, and excellent in what we do. Yeah. And why did you guys choose this industry? I know you got contacted by Start Engine asking about financials, but with that mm -hmm. volume of clients, you've obviously had other opportunities for areas to focus. I know we kind of fell into the space. It was a need yeah. from startups yeah. with market clients, and we were able to start marketing their offerings versus just their brand. What's mm -hmm. made you gravitate more and more towards the space and even champion for it? Yeah, one of the main reasons I must say is uh, it always brings me so much pleasure to when a client come back and say, thank you, thank you so much. And yeah. you've really helped us, you know, like helping clients solve their program. And as you've mentioned earlier, crowdfunding is really new and a lot of them are when it comes to financials, I'm not knowledgeable at all. So being able to work with them in that area and, and help them navigate that, even with filing from CAA at the beginning, right? Like all those questions, some of them needed assistance with that even. So nothing really bring me pleasure, right? And seeing how um, they go, I remember they go forward and raise money to, you know, meet the company needs to develop, you know, and, 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 and achieve the goals, you know, and, and I remember uh, one of the company and this company was um, an inception company, like with no uh, operation started anything. And this company went ahead and within two weeks and raised a million dollars. And that, I'm like, wow, like just because of the potential that the, the product had, I really like crowdfunding because, you know, it gives the opportunity to small, um, to small company, right? And, and even, and not when I'm, when I say small, I mean like startup in general, which is zero to five years. Also even mature companies when we probably need that investment to, um, to develop, to expand, right? We'll have hit, hit like a hiccup and need more funds to expand. So, um, so it brings me pleasure all the time seeing those startups with all their ideas and to change the world. And I remember before AI became a thing, we were doing AI clients, you know, like it's all these idea of the future. It all start with uh, these startups, right? So it really, it's, it's, um, it brings us uh, satisfaction to help them. So that's why we've start, we've stayed in this industry because it's not just about making money. Uh, it's also about making a difference in the life of the, um, 
of the issuers and, mm-hmm. and, and even in the economy and uh, or even like, yeah, it, it really, it brings me joy when I see those, some of those company go and become big company public. I'm like, wow, we remember when this company was just a startup, you know? So, and yeah, so that's why we stay in this industry. <laughs> Absolutely more rewarding. I, I was an ad tech before this, and let's say I was doing a campaign for a telecom carrier. We won't name anybody, yeah. but if I did mm-hmm. well, they'd say, great, we'll consider you for the next RFP, the next request for proposal process for our campaigns. And they were they were happy, but that's kind of where it ended, where we're directly part of our clients' growth. I'm sure yes. you get that same type of dynamic where you see their team get bigger, their offices, their market share. So I, I, I agree. It's it's very exciting. Exactly. And also most of our clients, they keep coming back. Right? Mm-hmm. They keep coming back for like when they need to raise again or their annual um filing requirements or even the quarterly filing requirements. So, and sometimes they ask for tax returns. So it's beautiful to see their growth. You know, it's beautiful to see that they're making a difference. Mm -hmm. And to echo what Danielle said. um, So, I mean, with the jobs act and this regulation crowdfunding coming out, right. Uh, I mean, it gives uh, the general public a, an opportunity to get on the ground floor for uh, of a start startup compared to uh, regularly uh, previously traditional methods. Um, general public can st- step in when uh, the company goes the IPO route. Compared to now, it's uh, more towards you're getting in on the ground floor or probably the first floor, and uh, that creates uh, a generational wealth. And then uh, we're total. Um, the reason why we stay in this market, we're totally bullish on it. I mean, with the re- uh, rate cuts from the Fed and everything kind of like uh, going down, definitely there's going to, I mean, uh, you, you'll see outflow from the risk-free investments uh, the, and there's probably uh, the frozen debt market is going to open up for sure. And the small cap stocks, uh, all the VC funding, all the PE funding, it's going to start flowing back into the startups. A lot of family offices are now actually uh, bullish on the startups as well. So this space, uh, we're bullish on it. We're growing our team and uh, just to cater the demand in there. And that's kind of like uh, why we were in this industry and why we want to stay in this. Same sentiment over here. And uh, I'm part of the Crowdfund Professionals Association board. I know they're campaigning for different tax credits for investors, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it, it expansions for how much can be raised. Yeah, I think we're in the first floor. I like that analogy, not just the ground floor, the first floor after the seed capital or earlier mm-hmm. round, but we're in the early stages of investment crowdfunding. And I really believe this is going to be a primary vehicle to, uh, to raise funds, you know, five, 10 years out as our lives yeah. become more and more digital. Definitely. Totally. So what are the requirements if we have founders listening in who are are not live with an investment crowdfund yet, campaign yet? What do they need to know about the requirements, audits, reviews, timelines? What type of education do you normally provide founders when they're looking to go this route? Yep. So... I'll take that one. So I'll cover the review side. So for a review, uh, for example, if you're a new issuer and you're looking to raise uh, up to 1.235 million under Rec CF, uh, you need to have a, a review of financials. And then if you're a repeat issuer and you need to raise uh, up to 618K, uh, you need to get your financial statements uh, reviewed. And then uh, a review, typically it covers uh, just getting um, some data from the client, crunching through the numbers, running some data analytics on it, performing some increase. And this whole timeline, again, depends upon how uh, ready the client is. But overall, our average turnaround time is seven to 10 days. And that's kind of like an industry benchmark in this space uh, to have a turnaround time of seven to 10 days. But that's basically what a review entails and then what's uh, required for a reg CF from the review perspective. And that's quick. I've seen issuers get backed up for months. They tell us what date they're going live and it just keeps extending, extending, whether that's uh, for, you know, the, the CPA review or the audit 
And for Reg CF for regulation A plus, it feels like there's a lot of back and forth to to get that complete. Uh, what are some of those items that can make, uh, let's say, a Form One A process extend out? Uh, what What are some of the things you get back from the SEC and some of the notes that you know are going to take more time? Um, I mean, I can I I can say that you know some of the things that help is like when a company have organized financial statement by when a company have a good accounting system in place and um uh, and are tracking the transaction properly and also when a company is able one of the challenges has been come other the statement of equity, you know, because when a company is crowdfunding and have additional investors, right? Like they need to know how to report things, for instance, safe note, convertible notes. So uh, being able to report those properly and um, is definitely um, a plus that helped during that process, right? And and staying on top of that, even if it's, like having uh, someone, a C, an outside CFO that can help them, uh, that can review their financials and also keeping their financial on a, on a, on an accrual basis because the financial need to be gap compliant, right? Because a lot of time companies are reporting their financial on cash basis because of tax returns. So it's important that, um, they went for crowdfunding because it's uh, they they are AICPA financials that are gap that have and, and gap has to be accrual. So it's important that um, that keeping their financial accrual. If not, they have to convert. A lot of time, what we've seen is companies um, having to convert their financials from cash to accrual, and that can take more time because additional journal entries need to be made. So um, as far as those are some of the challenges um, that we've seen, uh, yeah, as far as requirements. And also, um, it's important for company to, when it to report material changes when it comes to Form 1 essay, material changes um, of and significant event um, when they incur, and also um, quarterly interim financials. And also, it's also important for them to report how much money they raise at the end of their campaign. Mm-hmm. And just to take it a step further back, I was talking uh, with Zeray's about corporate structures and, mm-hmm. you know, the oh. differences from C Corp, not a K1, not LLC, uh, what that means on the tax side and what it means for investors as a whole. For any listeners, viewers that are tuned in, do you have any recommendations or, you know, want to give some guidelines for, for who can use these vehicles? I mean, definitely. So, um, Working with um, 1,900 plus uh, engagements and uh, Mm -hmm. 1,000 plus uh, audits and uh, clients, Uh, what we have seen in the space, a lot of startups, they just uh, start as an LLC. And later on, when they come to the Rec CF or any kind of money raising uh, event, right, that's when they realize or probably they get a pushback from the investors saying like, hey, you're you're an LLC and you need to be a C-Corp because investors, they prefer C-Corp structure. Uh, It's cleaner, it's efficient. And then at the same time, uh, it's uh, less regulatory uh, compliance from the tax side as well. Because if, uh, I mean, uh, we met a company, uh, they basically told us like, hey, we raised under Rec CF being an LLC and somebody invested a hundred bucks in us and we ended up paying 120 to our CPA just to file one year of K1. So, I mean, having the right corporate structure, that's crucial. Uh, that's a uh, C corp. It gives uh, all the investors an opportunity to see like, Hey, the company is well structured. If we invest, we're probably going to get dividends out of it. And uh, there's other ways to kind of like, uh, get out of the company, but an LLC, it's uh, it's not that formal. And then that's the reason why all the startup, uh, like Start Engine, WeFunder, they uh, prefer C-Corp structures and they actually uh, 
have the issuers convert to, uh, their structure to C Corp just because uh, all of that, and then setting it up right the first time if they yes. went through the uh, rec, uh, if they went through the C Corp structure right, they probably might not have to pay these uh, additional conversion um, legal costs around conversion, and then having the right share capital in there, having the right uh, the correct voting rights, the correct distribution rights from the uh, initial stage. That's crucial because uh, a lot of companies what they do even if they set up as a C-Corp, they just issue all the shares to the founders compared to uh, in if you go for a reg CF raise later on or any kind of uh, VC or PE uh, funding, they're probably going to buy uh, get more shares. And then if you don't have any shares available on your cap table, definitely uh, you need to uh, revise all your incorporation documents to include all of that. So having the right structure, having the right team at the beginning to uh, make sure that all your corporate structure, everything ties in. And then uh, from the tax side, Danielle is uh, an expert on the tax side, so she can take that on. But definitely that's kind of like my take on what we have seen clients do uh, wrong or maybe sp- uh, spend spending a lot more than they need uh, need to just uh, in the later stage if they had done the things rightly in the first place. So, Daniel, what, what is the optimal way to set this up? You know, as Zureis is mentioning, you have the right fundamentals at the beginning, going to save you a lot of time, likely monetary resources later on, even, you know, other potential problems that could occur perhaps even regulatory, but what are the best ways to envision the, the tax structure ongoing if you're looking to raise capital from the crowd? Yeah, totally. I would say C Corporation is always highly recommended. And I think Zuri mentioned it, you have uh, you don't have to deal with K1. Let's say you have a thousand investors in your campaign. If you are staying in LLC, you have to issue a thousand K1, and that's highly expensive to um a startup. So uh while with a um, C Corporation is only um one tax return you don't have to deal with that it's less costly you know um yeah so i think that the best structure when it comes to crowdfunding or a company going public is definitely um a c corporation when it comes to tax purpose yeah and we're talking about structure mm-hmm. what, what are some other things that founders do wrong you've worked with you know, over 1,200, sounds like over 2,000, you know, engagements in general. And Danielle, you were mentioning cash cash basis accounting versus gap accrual. Mm -hmm. What are some other things that you constantly see and wish you could correct almost, you know, upon, uh, you know, founders first learning about investment crowdfunding, you wish uh, it would be absorbed? Yeah, totally. Um, I would say that, you know, Definitely a lot of time, a company just file, uh, they, how can I say, they keep track of their financials, if, even if they have an accounting, an accounting system, is for tax return, right? Or sometimes they just want to see if um, that's staying on track with their projections, right? Like with the, or, or their budget. But uh, when it comes to crowdfunding, it's more compliance type of work. So, so when we get in there, uh, again, number one, the financial needing to be an accrual basis. A lot of time you will see companies, they don't even account for depreciation, things like that, or they don't account for interest on loans, right? Or they, they don't even know what is a statement of equity. Most of the, or it's cash flow statement. Most of the time, the only thing they know, the, the balance sheet the, or the PNL, the profit and loss, because that's what show them how they're doing with their sales um, or, or if they're making a profit or a loss and even for tax return purpose. So a lot of time they're not familiar with the other financial statement and also not keeping a good uh, track records of their documents. Um, all those things sometimes can take long because if financials, um, financial review or, or a financial audit really expose your business and tell the story from the beginning till where we are at, right? So um, it's very important to keep things organized, your article of incorporation organized. If you have any bylaws or, um, you know, keep those organized. 
you uh, uh, keep keep everything in place keep your 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 debt uh a lot of time we've seen debt on the financials and the companies are oh i don't have any agreement in place you know like so things like that they need to make sure there's an agreement if they keep track of everything right like you know because accounting is the language of business so you need to keep track Make sure everything is being written down, everything is being recorded. So um, so those are some of the challenges we've seen and that delay the process, right? And it, a lot of time that also challenges with company, let's say we're startups, um, uh, like coming up probably with evaluation of their companies, they wouldn't know how to value their company because a lot of time valuations are based on revenue. So, mm -hmm. uh, and for that, it's important to have an attorney. So I think when it goes to crowdfunding, working with the right CPA and also attorney, it's a great plus. It goes hands hand on hand, you know, and also another thing that we have noticed a lot is like, um, you know, like it, like companies done is, is a big one when it comes to, to, to the capital structures, you know, the cap table of a company, right? Like a lot of time they don't have good track of that, uh, a good records of that. Uh, so yeah. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I completely agree. And if you were able to, you know, get that organization yeah. uh, moving forward within the, the company, it could go yes. so much further. Um, uh, we, we come across that and, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're only advising on the marketing side of things. So yeah. hearing so, about some of these other moving pieces and um, being able to actually coach the founders to get there, I could tell you know, part of why you guys are seeing so much success on uh, on your, your issuer campaigns. Yeah. Uh, Zure, is there anything else uh, you want to add to that in terms of what founders do wrong? I mean, um, what Danielle covered and then uh, to on top of that, so what we have seen a lot of, uh, that's actually from a business perspective that, hey, you need to see why you want to raise money, mm. right? I mean, it's not like a bandwagon everybody wants to get on, the Reg CF. It's uh, probably, does it fit your needs? That's that's the right question to ask because, again, uh, Reg CF, uh, it's not one shoe fits all. Everybody has different needs. For example, if you need a uh, some working capital, just go out and get a line of credit. It's probably easier to get a line of credit compared to raising money, selling, uh, liquidating your cap table, and then just uh, doing that. So basically matching uh, your business goals with the type of funding that you need. So that's one thing uh, that basically founders should be looking out for in the uh, initial stage. The second thing, uh, all these complex instruments, uh, you see safes, you see convertible notes, uh, you see all other comp warrants and all that, just make sure that what impact it's going to have on your cap table because uh, we have clients they issued safes initially with uh, lower valuation caps or higher discounts and when they go for a price round ultimately the founder finds out like hey i, I just own like 15 or 20 percent of the company now because all those safes they convert it so that's kind of like making sure uh, having a good uh, strong cpa team a strong legal team who can navigate a uh, all these waters who can run the test numbers like hey if we do a price round at this uh, this is what our uh, cap table is going to look like that's kind of like one thing and then one other thing uh, i think initially uh, probably not in the very initial startup and especially the SaaS or the software companies but for all the other uh, type of issuers out there uh, doing rec cf they're mostly uh, trying to better present their profit and loss or their profitability compared to you're in a startup space. What you should be initially looking for is your cash flow management and your working capital management because if uh, you don't have enough money, lights go out. Doesn't matter if you're uh, profitable, but you should have sufficient cash to cover your expansion and do all of that. And basically management going in and putting their heads together and making sure that they have uh, the, the right goals and then all, all of their uh, raises for either equity or that they align with their initial goals. 
So you guys go in and oh. go beyond the financials. I mean, internal controls, standard operating procedures, maybe looking at misallocation of assets, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, theft. You had mentioned to me some of the things that you come across and you're able to address and then lead that into cash flow management, whether it's around profitability or whatever goals that issuer is going after, make sure that's essentially articulated through the numbers of the filing and the financials. I mean, definitely, definitely. And then internal controls, they're a very great tool. Uh, startup, if it's a one person or a two, four person team, you can still build in controls just to make sure that everything, uh, I mean, there's no loopholes, there's no misappropriation of assets, anything like that. And to, and having internal controls, they're real, uh, it's really beneficial for the company. Having uh, strong SOPs, it's uh, beneficial because later on, when once you start growing, right, it, it's prob you probably might not have time to look at these essential things that, hey, we need to have controls on, on our inventory. And there might be theft. There might be some uh, things that are going missing and stuff like that. So having strong internal controls, that's definitely important. Uh, working capital management, that's kind of like one thing that uh, that's really needed uh, in a startup uh, startup company. And that's kind of like how everything comes together. And if uh, a founder, I mean, a founder, they have a great idea. They probably don't uh, know how to run a company. They probably don't know how to run a company. But definitely, if they're not, uh, they don't have the accounting background, they don't know how to do the accounting and then also uh, how to do internal controls. And that's where uh, you get help from somebody who, who's been in this industry, um, who knows how to kind of like account for these complex transactions, how to better manage the working capital, and then uh, internal controls. And then one thing uh, we have seen, uh, seen a lot in this space is uh, people consider or startups consider the review or audit cost to be just a cost to get their campaign live. Compared to that, consider this a value addition service because uh, once a CPA comes in, they look at your financials, right? They're going to tell you like, hey, you're doing this wrong. You're doing this wrong. You're doing this wrong. And basically, if you have this, this, this control, you can avoid uh, making these mistakes over and over again. And basically, that's kind of like a value addition service. And then uh, that's uh, something that we try to cater as much as we can. We get on the call with the clients. We help them navigate these complex waters. We help them uh, kind of like, hey, uh, if you do this, you can avoid, avoid doing that. And then basically, overall audit and reviews, although they are necessary uh, evil for launching your campaign, but at the same time, if you use it correctly and if you have the right team in place, it's definitely uh, a value addition service. And it's uh, probably free because the code um, or the price that you're paying is uh, to get the review or audit, but still you're getting these value addition services and it's up to you and uh, probably the team that you have uh, who's doing the audit or review to communicate how you can get value addition out of this uh, already kind of like sunk cost that you're going to pay for the audit review. And I believe that leads to, you know, 60 to 70% of the delays, right? Is when there's hardships in encountered, you know, the financial process, the bookkeeping. So when you guys are straightening all of that ahead of time, if you're building those internal controls, you know, in some cases, they may not be hiring the right people and you're able to come in as, as a vendor and basically get everything in line so that those delays are, aren't part of the process. I mean, definitely uh, what we have seen in the industry. So our average audit lead time uh, is four to six weeks. Right. And then we see things getting pushed uh, in some instances to a year. And then we have wrapped up audits in seven to 10 days as well. Just because the companies were ready, they had the right team in place who were doing their books, uh, they had all the underlying schedules tied out back to their balance sheet and PL. We just went in, everything was provided, we just uh, cr crunched through the numbers and got out. So, again, uh, it, it drills down to or trickles down to how ready you are and then uh, how good internal controls you have, how good uh, a team of bookkeepers or uh, professional accountants you have in your uh, back pocket that are taking care of everything. So that's where it essentially drills down You make to. it sound so clear and easy. <laughs> I, uh, I hear so many question marks for, from all sides of the table, you know, from the mm -hmm. FINRA regulated portals to, to legal, to campaign consultants and quarterbacks. We 
try not to touch any financial questions on the on the marketing side. And I'm definitely gonna be pointing people to this episode. You know, as you're putting all this together, what what is the final, you know, what are the deliverables? You already mentioned a bit about the uh, the timeline. um, And, uh, you know, uh, the the review, the audit review, CPA review can get up to 1.235 million on a reg CF for the full 5 million, you need you need the audit, you mentioned the audit takes, you know, four to six weeks, the review more of seven to 10 days. But what, what is that onboarding process look like? And where do you go from there? Does it end there? What do you recommend in terms of later stages of the, the capital raise and beyond? Yeah, I can take that. So when it comes to uh, review financial, our process, um, so once we you engage us by right, it start with you engaging us we sent you um a list of everything we need to get started and then uh, we invite you to our dropbox where you upload and if you have any question you can we can set up a meeting with you and answer all your questions and then um once you upload you notify us uh, they ha- the the document have been uploaded, so we go to work, and then if we have any question, we come back to you. So and once you answer our question, we keep working, and once that is done, uh, we come up with a draft of the report. So a report includes uh, the full financial statement, which is balance sheet p and l uh cash flow statement and statement of equity the footnote to financials we uh we um describe the main account on your financials like for instance this company has this debt and these are the terms of this debt this is the uh, capital structure equity of this company right like this company has no lawsuit uh is there any related party uh this is how the company accrue for cash this is how the company accrue for receivable for inventory the fixed asset this is how they report it so we discuss all of that um a gap and then we give an opinion on the financials uh, which is like limited assurance when it comes to reviews and then we send you a draft of the report usually that report can go from 11 page to even like 50 page depending on uh, the history of the company and how much transaction uh, is is happening with the company so um, so your review and then everything if you have any question you come back to us we make adjustment as necessary we send it back to you you review again and then up we get to that point where you know we are both in agreement you know and it's compliant so and then we sent uh we final you make the final payment and we finalize we send you the management representation letter to sign and then uh we release the financial to you and to the crowdfunding firm a platform that refer us if you were refer by a crowdfunding platform so in general that's the process of a review and when it comes to an audit an audit is a more uh, detailed work and and it takes a lot more time because it's like an in-depth like um it's like a more comprehensive uh um like work about the company financials so it goes from not only internal control uh, testing your internal control it also goes into confirming your either your cash balance or confirming with the attorney that there's no lawsuit pending or a verification with vendors you know that yes indeed you have uh, this type of account receivable or sometimes it goes into substantive testing uh like of samples we determine materiality what amount is material so and then uh we sent you some some samples to send back to us and we have to see those invoice you know like and 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 tracking to make sure that all of that to make sure that um whatever amount was reported was actually uh actually um happened so so yes, the audit is more detailed and highly costly, and there's a lot of compliance work. Um, uh, we have like 50, I believe, up 
maybe up to 50 documentation to do when it comes to an audit. So it's a lot of back and forth. Um, so, and that takes a little more time and it's very costly. So um, it's highly costly compared to a review. It could be five times the fee of a review. So mm -hmm. once we are done with that and we are pleased, we put the report together. Once we've done all the testing work and the confirmation, the verifications and, you know, and, and, and we, we also have like Excel work papers going on where we are tying out numbers and, you know, so once we are done with all of that, then we put the report together for financials, put note to financials and our audit opinion, which is reasonable assurance that there's no material misstatement. So, and then it goes uh, through back and forth. You read it, make sure we didn't, you know, it's, a, it's an appropriate representation of your company. Mm -hmm. And then you get back to us. If you have any change, we are going to um, correct it. If you have any change, as long as, is it stays is the financial remain compliant right so and then um up to we get we send it view the, uh, the 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 on, until we get to a final draft and then uh once you are okay with it we send you the management rep letter to sign which basically say these financials they were prepared by the management of by the company right like and and then once you sign that and make the payment for the final invoice we release the financials to you then uh, I think from there, the crowdfunding platform walk you through um, filing from CRR for a review, you know, and, or from, and then the ongoing requirement, I think like once a year, like you have to file an annual report, right? Like, and, 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 and then when it comes to an audit, uh, depending, I think it is when you are doing a tier two, I think a tier one doesn't have ongoing, uh, quarterly, um, interim financials. Uh, filing is mm -hmm. when wow. when it goes to tier two, which is 20 million and above up to 75 million that you are raising that you have to um, quarterly uh, file interim financials and also um, anytime there's a material event with your company, if there's a change in, let's say, the CEO in a key key position in the firm, for instance, report something like that, if the shares were diluted, something, material events need to be reported. And also um, the company also need to report how much many money it's, it, it has raised, you know, um, I think at the end of their campaign, you know, so um, I don't know if I'm forgetting anything. So yes, those are the ongoing requirement I can think of right now, Zure, you can take it over if I forgot anything. So yeah. And also another thing is stay, stay engaged with uh, your investors, like yes. keep them informed. You know, uh, that's that's really, really helpful with a, with a campaign. Let them know what's going on. They need to feel like that part of, you know, your community of you care that much to keep them informed, to communicate with them, you know, so yeah. Absolutely. Oh. And we work on that on the marketing yeah. side. We've uh, um, done a fourth round with one issuer right now. I've had three yes. successful Reg CFs and the Reg A Plus. Uh, yeah. Reg A Plus just passed six million. Uh, we oh, wow. see investors participate in one round and then the mm -hmm. next. And mm -hmm. as a result of the ongoing content marketing that they do in mm -hmm. between rounds and retargeting mm -hmm. of ads from one campaign to the next, I've mm -hmm. seen. In contrast, issuers who on a Reg CF campaign are not communicating with their investors yeah. thereafter. And yeah. as soon as they try to go back to the crowd, there's question marks. We'll see yeah. in the comments of the advertisements, complaints, and overall doubt, concerns. So on one hand, you, you could really utilize this audience that you're building. They could be ambassadors for your company, whether it's B2B, whether it's B2C, the company yeah. I'm mentioning is B2B. And uh, if you don't, it could become a real issue for you. So even just in terms of optics and relationship building, d do the ongoing reporting, yeah. do the yeah. ongoing, you know, newsletters and webinars. Yeah. We have uh, mm -hmm. clients that aren't 
doing investment crowdfunding any uh, investment crowdfunding anymore but every month we do a webinar for them to speak to those investors yes. so that they're able to keep those relationships going and and I have to say I absolutely love what you guys do on the audits that's what makes this industry so transparent how it democratizes access to early stage investments for investors how it brings investors to to these founders and there's trust there's belief across the board because of the audited financials because mm -hmm. of everything you guys are doing even just in the review stage i, I feel like there are very few, uh, if any, bad actors. There are founders who are not able to hit their goals, but because of the systems that you guys have put in place and how you submit, uh, you know, with portals and to the SEC, we're able to trust what's in there and have a reasonable mm -hmm. sense of what's occurring for a business, not just be swayed by clever marketing, you know, on my side of the equation or anything like that. There, there are actual numbers, tangibles that are put in here. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Totally. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, excellent. I, I want to ask a few you know, speed questions before we wrap things up here. Per the title of the show, Test Optimize Scale, what do you recommend for founders? What do you recommend uh, for CEOs who are tuning in to test it, to test out? I look at uh, you know growth as a series of tests for their next round. What, what, what do you wish they could put in place today? I mean, uh, from the test side, so... First thing, look at what your financial goals are, mm -hmm. what you need the money for, and then align it with everything. And since the rate cuts, it's probably going to swell equity uh, debt market. Uh, it's going to open up. And then a lot of uh, equity contributions are going to come in from the VCs, PE groups, and then basically testing out the water campaign, uh, checking uh what feedback that you get from there and then making sure that uh, you're ready in case you have to launch a campaign. And if that's the right fit for you, making sure that uh, you're ready to have a campaign launch and get your uh, audit, uh, get your financials uh, in line to be ready for an audit or a review or whatever uh, direction you're going to go. But I think uh, from the testing side, that's kind of like one main thing that you need to cover. And then, um, yeah, so that's kind of like the main goal. And to be honest, I mean, if a company is just, uh, we're really bullish on this space. Um, Rec CF, it's going to grow, it's going to increase. And then a lot of small uh, platforms that specialize in the debt uh, instruments, for example, you have Honeycomb Credit, you have SMBX that uh, do Rec CF uh, campaigns for debt, uh, debt instruments. Mm -hmm. So those are going to probably go up again. Uh, as well, because uh, as the interest rates are coming down, probably uh, people uh, and you get a huge uh, kind of like cushion from the risk free interest rate uh, on the Honeycomb credit and SMBX. So that's probably going to uh, start growing as well. And then the equity piece is already in there. Uh, it's already growing. It's already increasing. And then once uh, the equity uh, markets uh, start coming up because the VCs and the PEs probably uh, are going to have more money coming in from their uh, debt borrowings to invest in these startups, then uh, definitely it's, uh, there's huge potential. Uh, but again, it's not something that you just launch your campaign and people are going to pour money in. It's essentially kind of like an e-commerce business where uh, you have to have the right marketing team in place. That's where, Jason, you come in and then uh, you have to make sure sure that uh, you you have all the uh, loose ends tied up and are you ever part of an optimization conversation maybe it's in between rounds for a founder and uh, you know they're, they're looking to change up uh the story they're telling on the financials maybe they didn't uh you know hit their milestones and are looking at a down round maybe they're looking to do a significant increase to the valuation are there any tips in terms of of optimization so from the optimization side what we have seen uh we have worked with a lot of clients they start their test the water campaign uh, get their campaign launched with a review and once they see the momentum building up they just convert to an audit have their uh, form c a filed and then uh, have their uh, go for the uh, full five million mark but what we have seen uh, people uh, trying to optimize is and 
regular issuers who come back, what you need to learn from this whole process is that, hey, how? I mean, if you've done a, a campaign once or if you're already within the campaign, see what's working from you from the marketing side, see what's working from you for the fi- from the financial statement side, because uh, a lot of times... Uh, Again, due to uh, marketing uh, restrictions on uh, Reg CF, right, uh, mm-hmm. and all the campaigns, uh, you cannot uh, kind of like do uh, go out and market like, hey, we generated uh, X amount of. I mean, you can present you generated X amount of revenue, but again, your campaign page is your selling uh, or kind of like your selling shop, and then having a very good management uh, MDNA uh, management discussion and analysis, and they're highlighting the key bullet points, highlighting the industry growth or the industry trends that you're operating in, having those covered, having those uh, very neatly and uh, in easy, understandable language for the general public. Because again, Rexy, if you're not dealing with uh, smart money, um, because it's a lot of VCs and PEs, they're in the space, they do invest, but again, it's mostly general public. And most of these people, they don't understand what EBITDA is, or they don't understand uh, what working capital is. And mm-hmm. you have to make sure that your campaign page, your marketing, uh, it's right to the point, it hits the mark, and you get people to open up their wallets and uh, invest in you. Awesome. Excellent. Yeah. So everything's already added. I will also say a lot of time when companies do exactly what they said they will do with the fund that they've raised, Mm -hmm. it helps them to come back for more money when they keep to their words. Right. And also they can also offer incentive to their investors, but like, um, and, and keep them, um, Keep them, again, build those relationships, keep them engaged, keep them involved. That's when marketing comes. Don't just raise the money and forget about them, you know. So um, build trust. Building trust is really important when it comes to optimization, you know. Uh, And then another thing is getting brand ambassadors, right, like uh, on their, for their service or products. That's really, really helpful to have. I uh someone uh with credibility endorse one uh product or services. So yeah. And also believe I I think it's two more things. The other thing I think um is important and I think Zuri mentioned it to keep learning, keep educating themselves, like because and 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 even learning about financials because a lot of time founders are very much in the own world but I like understand um the financials is very important and continue to educating themselves in that even if they have hired the best of the best cpas and controller or financial analysts like it's always important that they, they really have an understanding of what's going on uh with the financial condition of their business um yeah, and and believe that in possibilities. Believe uh, they they have to be the the biggest the the biggest cheer their own biggest cheerleader for for um for people to come along and 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 grow that with them. You know, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Those are great tips. Yes. And, and can be applied directly towards towards scaling there. And and yeah. You know, from from other conversations, sounds like that's what you guys are seeing among the the top issuers today. Yeah. Danielle Zurez, this has been so educational for me. And I, you know, have worked with hundreds of issuers, not not over a thousand, like you guys have spoken (laughs) to that many, but uh, I I am taking notes, Uh, you know, even the 618K on the second round, there's some stats that are completely new for me. So I I, want to thank you so much for taking the time to break all of this down and give us the information. If anyone's tuned in and would like to get in contact with you, perhaps learn more, where is the best place for them to go? I would say our website, um, set and also, uh, reach out to Zurari. He's really like the, a great in client, communication so i think it's raised at setupadfs.com so or to me danielle at setupadfs.com so yeah 
and highly encourage you to take up Danielle and Zure's on that offer and get, get in touch. Don't be bashful. You want to make as many relationships as you can in this space. And uh, yeah. Danielle, Zure's, th thanks again for doing this. It's been great. Thank you for having us, Jason. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Thanks. Really appreciate everything. Enjoyed it just as much, if not more than you guys. And uh, th thank you every for everybody tuning in. We will see you next time. Take care.